Greetings fellow interloper, it's your buddy Taylor here, back with a next level base building video. And if you're tired of the same old, same old building parts, well, stick around, we're gonna roll the sleeves up and give that teleport module a little makeover. This, my friends, is Whiskey Barrel Gaming. was my teleport cube. Now the fun part, we're gonna build it together, but we will be using some glitches, so make sure you're up to speed with all those. Here's a link to my Glitching 101 video if you need a refresher. All right, let's dive in. We're gonna start with a sphere. Now you're probably wondering why a sphere, we're doing a cube. But we're actually gonna glitch our initial cube onto the side of the sphere. That's gonna give us that tilt that you saw in the video. Now on the sphere, you can see there's some markings where my little white cursor is. There's two vertical lines and then there's a couple above it right there. Those are gonna help us with our first glitch. Now I've done a little trial and error, so I've already got kind of my spot picked out. So our first cube goes in at a good angle. So with the simple wire glitch, we'll start with our square in the green state and then we're gonna glitch it onto the sphere. Now as far as where on the sphere, as you can see, those two vertical lines where there's two horizontal lines above it, and I'm gonna go right in between those two horizontal lines. It's hard to place an object precisely when you've got that big green dot, so I actually just go left or right on that menu. So I drop that out, I get my dot, I know exactly where I'm gonna place it, and then I slide back over to the wire, and that's when I do my glitch. All right, so now we have our square and the bottom point and the top point look pretty much lined up, so we can go ahead and delete our sphere now. Now, our total square is gonna use 27 of these cubes. So if it helps, imagine a Rubik's Cube. That's pretty much the exact same thing. Now this first layer we're doing is the middle one, and then we'll add the nine cubes to either side to make our full cube. And so the very bottom cube, the one that's red here, that's what we're gonna use to put our pill lights on, and those pill lights are what we're gonna glitch our base teleporters on. And the squares above it, we can just remove for right now. So we're gonna push in a little bit and get a closer look at the side of this cube. Now each cube on every side has an inner square. You can see that. And the inner square has kind of a marking of where the center is. We're not gonna put the pill light in the center, we're gonna focus on where the connection is. Now the connection needs to be right at the edge of this inner square and centered as best as you can. So that's about right. And we're gonna do this on the other side as well. These are gonna serve as the connection points to our teleporters. All right, now the fun part, we get to look at lighting. Now with mine, I use blue lights, but you can certainly use whatever colors you want. I've got a few examples set up to give you an idea of how they look. Now here I've used a combination of red and blue lights to make a purple light. You just kind of stagger them back and forth between red and blue. So when you do that, you get a really cool violet hue. Over here I used a combination of red and yellow. It definitely seems like the yellow overpowered the red because it seems yellow, not the orange that I was looking for. Next up we have the pink lighting, which looks really cool. Uh, if you're a male and you feel self-conscious about using the color, you can just call it magenta. And I think the green looks pretty cool as well, so you really can't go wrong. Use one, use them all, use none. It's your cube. Now we're gonna place our pill lights in all along the edges of the outer part of the cube. We're gonna make sure and overlap them slightly. They're very collision friendly, meaning they can overlap with one another without red stating. And when they overlap with each other, it's also easy to power because you just need to run a cable to one of them and it'll light them all by proximity. Oh, I know you're glued to your seat watching me place all these pole lights. Now it's not the most fun thing to do. It is a little tedious, but if you take the extra time, you'll be very happy with the results, I promise. Now 
Now here I start moving inward and I realize this isn't going to be an exposed edge, so I deleted all those. So here, it's important to note that this is kind of its own clump because it's not really touching anything else. And since it's not touching anything else, it has to have its own power source. At the end of the video when I'm running power, I forgot this, so these clusters don't get power. All right, now that we have this layer completely lined with lights, we'll go ahead and put those two cubes back in. Now, if you were to remove those cubes, it will pull the lights out with them. So make sure you have all the lights where you need them before you put your cubes on. So now we'll just go ahead and add our next layer to this side, and we're going to add another layer on the other side. Now, before you put all your cubes on the outer layer, you can line certain parts with lights as well, the parts that are going to be on the outside edge. Now here, for simplicity, I elected just to do the outside edge. But where the cubes meet, if you were to make, say, a plus sign right now, you could line some of those cubes where the outside edge will be to get extra lighting in. All right, so after you've lined the edge with your lights, you can put those blocks in to make your final layer. Or you could add more lighting in between blocks. It's up to you. All right, so we have all our blocks in place. Sweet. We have 27 in place now and a boatload of connectors. So it will be a little bit of a challenge when you first do this to find the right ones to glitch your teleporter onto. But you'll notice that the two that we need are the only ones that are kind of inset because we put them up inside the cube and all the others are very close to the edge. So that's kind of why it's also important to make sure that when you're running your lights, keep them close to the edge so you can make sure and differentiate the two. So there's our first one. Now if we move around to the other one, you'll see that it kind of sits in the middle and it's easy to find. So after you've glitched your second one in, you just need to power them up. I've got some power running inside my structure here. You can definitely tell it's on the telltale sign of the blue fog. And since it kind of overlaps with the other one, it powers it by proximity. Now I have two, obviously you can just have one, but I wanted to be able to have uh, teleporter access from either side. Next, we just need to power our lights up. We've got two primary groups of lighting, but there are a couple other little pockets that I did forget about at the end of the video. So as good as it looks, it should actually have just a little bit more shimmer because there were a couple uh, groups of lights that I did not power. So make sure if you put all the time and work into running those lights that all the groups have their own power. And there we go, one teleport cube. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It puts a pretty cool spin on the teleporter. If you like the video, you know what to do. Drop a like, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the video in the comment section below. And if you have any pictures you'd love to share with your creations, feel free to send them my way at Whiskey Barrel Gaming, all one word, at gmail.com. Who knows, I might even give you a shout out in one of my videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, there's a pretty good chance you'd like these as well. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming, signing off.